but we have come a long way. He has been called the father of the modern civil rights movement. Not Martin Luther King Jr., but E.B. Nixon, the man who drafted King to lead the Montgomery bus boycott. On a blustery day in Montgomery a year ago, he talked about the memory of King, forgotten by some, never known by others. They don't know nothing about that. There was a time when you couldn't eat in the Eli Cafe. They don't know nothing about that. They don't know nothing about that. There was a time when you couldn't try on a pair of shoes. Or they did it in the city. If you wanted to buy them, you'd look at them and say, yeah, this is my side. They don't know nothing about that. They don't know nothing about that. There was a time when you couldn't park a car on Dexter Avenue. They don't know that. We have a legitimate uh, gripe, a legitimate protest. And we feel also that one of the great glories of American democracy is that we have the right to protest for rights. There is little in King's background prior to his arrival in Montgomery that would have positioned him for the leadership of the Montgomery boycott. It has been moved and seconded that uh, the resolution that read will be received and adopted. Are you ready for the question? All in favor, let it be known by standing on your feet. No earlier pastorates, no previously held positions in any of the existing civil rights organizations, no public desire to become the symbol of the movement or a Nobel Peace Prize winner for peace. But his quiet eloquence and passionately held philosophy of nonviolence combined to catapult him to national and international prominence. King captured the conscience of the nation by reminding the nation, black and white, that it still had a single conscience. We must never forget there are some white people in the United States just as determined to see us free as we are to be free ourselves. We must never forget that there were two lads by the name of Michael Swern and Andy Goodman from New York City, white lads who died right here for our freedom. We must never forget that it was Reverend James Reeb, a white Unitarian minister who died in Alabama for our freedom. <laughs> we must never forget that it was Mrs. Viola Liuzzo who died on Highway 8 in Alabama for our freedom. Martin Luther King Jr. was 39 years old when he was shot down in Memphis, Tennessee, about the age of Jesus when he was crucified. But in 39 years, King had become the living symbol of the movement which toppled every major legal barrier to black equality in America. This is Ron Saylor.